Hello everyone, Fountain Pen is writing here with a new Fountain Pen review. Today we are going to take a look at the Clyde Pen Company V2 Green Venom. Let's start. The pen arrives in this very long black box with the name Clyde Pen Company on it. Open the box and there is a small greetings card with handwritten thanks and on the other side a couple of tips on how to take care for the pen and you can see the company's business card stuck to the box with the Mr. Duncan's web address and email. Then we have the pen, a large torpedo shaped fountain pen in this beautiful material. This is a cartridge converter fountain pen and a K5 Schmidt converter is provided and it is already in the pen. Now let's take a look at the pen. The V2 Green on Venom is an oversized fountain pen made in Scotland by Mr. Duncan, owner of the Clyde Pen Company, that can make both custom fountain pens and offers three different standard models. This is one of the standard called V2. The pen has a torpedo shape, the cap curving gently as the barrel and both of them taper into the rounded end. Cap and barrel fits flush to the body and the edges are slightly rounded and can both be seen and felt. It is simple shape but well made and the resin is called Kirinite, a very taut acrylic used not only for fountain pens but also by knife makers to make knife handles because it is easy to shape using simple and conventional tools like CNC lights uh, and to polish. As you can see, the swirls and pearlescences and chatoyances of this material are amazing, really phenomenal, especially in these olive green colors. The cap unscrews with two and a half turns, revealing this section made of the same acrylic as the rest of the pen. The section is very comfortable in the hand, it begins with a small horizon band and angles up a little bit to the threads and to a medium side step up to the barrel. The barrel and the cap are very wide, but the section is not so chunky, so it is very comfortable and suitable for any hand. The nib is a number 6 box stainless steel nib, a 1.5mm stub nib that has the logo of the Bok company on it and this is the standard Bok unit that can be unscrewed and replaced with another Bok nib unit. And here we have the classic Bok plastic feed. You can unscrew the section and there is the Schmidt converter but you can even use the entire barrel as a ink reservoir making it an eyedropper fountain pen. In this way you have a monstrous ink capacity. Now it's time to compare this pen with other fountain pens. As I said before, this pen is very large oversight pen, but nevertheless very comfortable and light in the hand. You can see how large it is compared to the Platinum 3776, Lamy Safari and Narval Yellow Tongue. Capped, it is slightly longer than the Narval, which is already a full size fountain pen. Uncapped, the pen surmounts the other tree. The pen is not designed to be posted. Almost all in this pen just works and works very well, but the nib. Regardless of my efforts to let the nib work properly, this particular nib just won't work. Fixing a baby bottoms problem, aligning the tines, flushing the feed, nothing seems to be working and the results are evident. The ink flow is inconsistent, sometimes it writes like a 1.5 stub nib, sometimes like a 1mm stub nib, sometimes it is very wet and sometimes it doesn't write at all. I was so desperate that in the end I got another nib from FP Nibs, an extra fine bulk unit that writes beautifully. Now, 
When this nib decides to work, the line is a very sharp 1.5 mm suitable for every script like Gothic or Italic or Fractal or even the fantasy script inspired by the Lord of the Ring. And this is the script I'm using right now. As always, for all my writing samples, I use the Waterman Blue to get a consistent comparison between the nibs to see if they are dry or wet, but in this case, the ink flow is so inconsistent that I cannot say if the nib is wet or dry. The V2 Green Venom is a stunning looking fountain pen, oversized but light and fits any hands thanks to the particular section. The material is phenomenal and you never tire of rotating the pen to see the effects of the resin. The issue is the nib unit. I know that the bulk nibs are not known for their consistency so I asked Mr. Duncan if he could perform a nib check before shipping the pen. Uh, when I bought the pen, Mr. Duncan did not offer this a service. Maybe today he has changed his mind, but as a personal opinion, I think that the small artisan producers should be able to check their nibs and eventually replace them if they do not work properly. This is their real advantage against the big producers and distributors who cannot check every single nib. Today it seems that this particular model with this resin is no longer available from the Clyde Pen Company, but since I bought the pen, I have followed Mr. Duncan's work and today he offers not only very special models, but also different ink filling system and even a monite housing adapter for Pilot, Platinum, Pelican, Visconti and Sailor nibs, and this is something that you don't see very often. I paid a full price of 170 euro for this pen and it was too much for what I got. Today the available standard models have a range between 100 and 135 pounds, but for custom orders you need to contact Miss Tarkan directly. And that's all. Thank you for watching this video, if you like it please consider leaving a thumb up. For the next review we will take a look at the new Parker Duofold Big Red, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, you won't miss that video. See you soon!